Today's topic is realizing your full potential, taking clear positive action. So today's uh, main field is about the body. So we always talk about body, speech, and mind, which is the three door, door of the body, door of the speech, and door of the mind. <clears throat> Reason why it's called three doors because it serves as a door. Uh, we have a possibility to enter through these doors to reach connection to ourself, to reach connection to our higher self, to reach connection to the inner refuge, enlightened beings, refuge tree. So that's why it's called door through which we can connect. But very often also sometimes these doors are not working as a door of entrance. They, and we end up using them door of exit. So disconnecting with ourselves, losing connection to the divine, losing connection to the refuge. So very often this is what happens. So the practice is, is always about remembering because the, our body, speech, and mind is so close to us all the time with us every time remembering that this is so close to us. And uh, whenever one of these doors are active, when my body is active, energetically active, to recognize what kind of space is in, what kind of field of energy it's in, what kind of state of thoughts it is in, thoughts it's having, what kind of feeling of emotion is activated, what kind of decision it's going to take place or it's trying to looking for, or what kind of decision it's making in any given moment. And so because in, in, the, in the very second, last, very, very specific moment, if one is aware of these things, one is able to see those things, then, you know, there's much more better opportunity to protect oneself from one's negative action. Uh, there is much more possibility to take, uh, a, make a better choices because we always do have a choice, always we do have a choice, even though sometimes we feel we don't have a choice. And we may be able to make a right choices. Uh, when, we, we, when we know or do a, I feel angry, for example, I feel ang angry, I feel ang anger, uh, I, I am identifying with my pain. My pain is making this, this negative, very negative decision to hurt someone, say hurtful, say hurtful things or do hurtful things. But I do have a choice not to do that because I am not my pain. I am not my anger. I am more than that, beyond that, some sense of even a question like that, that I'm more than my, I'm not my anger, I'm not, not my pain, I am more than that. It just opens up this door and window that you feel almost, already you're breathing differently, almost, already you're feeling a different kind of space, different kind of energy, already you are having a new thoughts, uh, fresh emotions, uh, positive emotions, um, hopeful decisions. You're shifting and changing all the time. So that's why I think it's important to understand that um, because, you know, if you look past in our life, how many times you have made decisions that you regret? How many times in the past actions that, that you have taken that you regret now? And we all, we all have our weakness. I think that's one of the very important that as a humanity, as a, as a friendship, as a family, as a, just a human being, always trying to have that space of openness to other people, not to only continuously judge them the rest of their life because of what some actions, negative actions they took in the past. So that's, we all do that. We, I'm, maybe I might be angry at somebody, somebody who, who did something not right to me or said right to me, hurt, said hurtful, hurtful thing to me. 
that was 25 years ago, 30 years ago, 10 years ago. But I still hold that. And when I hold that, I, when I think about that person, I always think about that person, such a bad person, such a mean person, such an uh, unhonest person, uh, because this person said that to me, did that to me. Yes, uh, we hold that. But have you have any connection with that? Do I have any connection with that person? Do I know that person is still like that? Do I, or do I know that person has completely changed, transformed? It's beautiful, this being has transformed into a beautiful being, but you're still punishing that person through the past, something happened in the past. So we do that, but I think it's good um, always, you know, if other people are doing to you, it's a different story, which you, it's not your responsible. But when you do, 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 do that to someone else, it's your responsibility to just to be aware of it. If it is it right thought? Is it is right feeling? Or is it that you are, you are angry at the current person because of the past action? Or the current past person is the same as the per, 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 current person, you know? So somehow able to see that, then we open our heart. Because you change, we change, I change, we all change. So somehow that sense of feeling more openness toward other people, that people change, people grow, people transform. And uh, so that holding that space is, uh, I think, one of the beautiful, greatest uh, space that we can hold in ourselves for other people. So, so anyway, realizing your full potential is every time in our life, every time, every month, every week, every day, every hour, every minute, we, we are always challenged. Am I manifesting my full potential? Am I trying to make a right decision? Right? What is the right decision? Well, that's a good question. What is the right decision in life? Uh, any given situation, I think we have our own full potential. You know, as a parent, we can say that, you know, those of you who are parents, we all, I always felt that children are always perfect. There's never a bad children. Children are great. But they might not re relate well with your situation. You might not be able to relate well with your own upbringing, your, with your own expectations, with your own needs, your own conditions. You might, not, you might have a harder time relating with them. That is not to say they're bad. And the parent's job is not trying to make your children like yourself, your children like some other children. Not like every children has to go to Harvard. Not every children has to have to do things what you do. But parents do that. If Professionally, they always want children to do the same thing. Maybe they want to do it, maybe they don't want to do it, but it's oh, make sure that it is not imposed and pressure. Make sure, given the circumstances, that they have some kind of uh, calling for that. Their mission is that. How do how to make that happen? That's such a difficult question for a parent. Same thing with our own life. What is your calling? What is what you really meant to do in this life? You know, it's so sometimes what happens is that people um, people say, oh, everybody, uh, like every Indian guy, person wanted to become engineer or IT or something like that, or lawyer or doctor or something like that. So sometimes in the society, so much pressure to become lawyer or IT or because everybody else is becoming lawyer or IT. Maybe in some cases it works out fine. Other, case, other cases, someone is paying a lot for that. 
press, collective social pressure, a suicide or depression or unhappiness, big portion of one's life, they go into those situations because they really are not able to in touch with what their really wishes are, needs are, their dream is. They're not able to. So it's the same thing that, you know, we know like a, um, like personally myself, being a Tibetan, growing up through the Tibetan parents, growing up as a very difficult situation in life, very difficult situation, a lot of poverty, lack of food, growing up in very harsh conditions, but in a nice environment, in a monastery, and coming to the West, trying to understand West, learn West, trying to grow here. Big mess internally, right? So, so many different things are happening simultaneously. So how do I know what really I want? It's not easy. But that doesn't mean we cannot really uh, try to open our heart trying to recognize what, what really I'm meant to do in my life, what really my calling is. It's hard to know. But one thing I can say is that, you know, to, to make sure it's not a pressured, collective pressure of society and others, others' expectations. Make sure, do you feel that it's the right decision? Make sure when you do that, you makes you happy. So I recently shared a little, little reflection of the day. We all introduce to other, when we introduce ourselves to other people, we say, or oh, immediately we talk about, what do you do? People ask that question. You know, I, I often have problem with that, you know. Um, as a traveler, you know, when you're traveling, you're somebody sitting right next to you in an airplane, you start to kind of uh, energetically, you start to like the person, you start to have a conversation, you're having a nice conversation without knowing anything about each other. You are uh, uh, financial status, your job status, you are you're not, uh, maybe even not knowing what ethnic group background you are from. But just as a human being, you have a wonderful connection and conversation. And then at some point, we cannot continue that. People start to ask, what do you do for a living? Or what do you do? What's your profession? Or something like that. I often think, um, because then, then immediately when you tell what you do and things like that, then they begin to look, you, look at you differently. You have nothing changed. You're just the same person. They immediately look at you differently. They relate you differently, talk to you differently. And that's not, seems not really nice. You know, because we value, we, we are not, seems like we are not valuing enough as human being each other. Face changes, tone changes, attitude changes toward each other. And I'm always trying to be more careful not to do that. Just, first of all, not trying to not really ask just, just have conversation. So, what is your calling? That the main question is because sometimes we make decision at needing needing more. That's another thing, you know. Enjoying life with what you have is one thing. Suffering life needing more what you don't have, it's different life, two different lifestyles. And that there are less people who enjoy their life, whatever they have, they have a health, they enjoy their health because it's not going to last forever. They have a good strong foot, they walk, they climb. They have a body which can move, and they move. They have a voice that they can sing, they sing. They have a mind that is a creative. They're trying to be creative, not necessarily always trying to earn something out of it, but to be creative. Creativity itself is giving you enough nourishment and joy. 
It's, it's called living. You're living. But when we, most of the time when people, you, when you people look, then it, it's about always needing more. Needing more money, needing more love, needing more acknowledgement, needing more fame, needing more something, needing more. And these people who need more, they don't live their life. They don't enjoy their life. I mean, there should be somewhere the distinction very clearly, the need and, and, and being creative and enjoying life. The best successful people, they enjoy what they do. They don't feel the need, need of something. When, when the need enters into the situation, it's a pain entering into the situation. Stories of pain entering into the situation. So sometimes what you feel you need it is not what you really will be helpful to you because the need is the need of pain. And the pain does not give you joy and creativity in life. But the need is somehow, it's somehow in you feeling I need to do, I mean, there are a lot of people who they say, oh, I, I have a, uh, I am 60 years old, I'm 70 years old, I am decently, pretty good health situation, and I could now live my life, serve others, not need much. But then other people feel they need more. So they're living, continuously living their life based on need not based on wanting to serve. So, so I think realizing your full potential and making clear decisions, that seems like a, every day we are challenged with that. Every, I see that all the time, no matter what age group you are in. Life is perfect, but that somewhere there's something, some need is there, and need is clearly not recognized is you really don't need it. You feel you need it. You really don't need that in order to live your life, in order to be happy in your life, in order to serve other people, in order to uh, uh, tap into your fullness, in order to manifest your potentiality. You don't feel that need of that. That the need is coming from pain, not your joy, not your potentiality. So then we end up making decisions instead of clear positive actions, we end up doing unclear negative actions. We end up making decisions, unclear negative decisions. We, we end up acting unclear negative actions decision. Like you would say something, painful words towards someone, you really did not meant to say that. In your heart, you're good. You did not, you would not say that. In your clear mind, you will not think of saying it. In your clear action, you will not act like that. But you did. You did that unclear negative action because the, you're, you're who you are, your, your positivity, your positive thoughts, your clarity has been obscured by this deep sense of need of your pain identity. It took it over for that very moment. And that more very moment could be a big moment. It could affect entire life. Somebody uh, shoot someone and go rest of their life in murder. I say in prison. A few seconds. Or somebody says something on, on very unawarely, awarely, pay, pay a lot of consequences for that, that speech. So we are always constantly challenged with that uh, action. Let's 
let's think a little bit like, you know, in all our life, this particular moment and this particular transition in your life, but this particular important decisions that you're trying to make in your life, particular actions that you're trying to take, is it a clear positive action? Is it a clear positive decision? Is it a coming from right place? A place of openness and joy? Or it is a coming from obscure place, doubtful place, fearful place, driven with needs, disconnected with self-awareness? And once you take this action, take this decision, you will regret the rest of your life. So what is that in each, each one of you, this particular moment? So let's do a short meditation. I want to guide all of you in a short meditation. And then in this meditation, you can look at your current situation. And I hope that we will able to recognize our need and pain. We hope that by realizing that, we hope we're able to loosen up that. I hope that we can flare, find more, some clear uh, place and space in ourselves. I hope that we can connect some deeper, our deeper sense of who we are. I hope that from that deeper, clear place, we are able to make some, uh, see something clear, make some clear decision take some clear positive action, which action will serve you and others and collective well-being. So please bring your full attention to this moment. Bring your full attention to this, your place, location. Bring your full attention to your body, in your body, to your body, in your body. Feel very clearly when mind connects to your body, there is a sense of joy and fullness and connectedness.
Feel the stillness in your body. Be aware of it, connect with it. Feel the silence in your speech. Be aware of it, connect with it. Feel the openness in your heart. Be aware of it, connect with it. Be aware of this inner stillness, silence, spaciousness. They are experiences are different through three different doors. In essence, there is one, only one. It's just you. This was infinite space, light, and warmth. Just you. Connect with that. Where you are free from all pain conditions, worries. That's where we all wanted to be connected. That's, that's, that's who you are. Just find that place for a moment. And be aware that decisions that you're about to make, actions that you're about to take, for see them as they are, Be aware of any sense of anxiety, stressful, pain, worries that you are feeling around it, or if you are feeling around it, how much you're feeling around it, how disconnecting it is. We all have different levels, so just be fully aware of your own situation. This is about knowing what's going on. It's not about creating more or reducing less. It's just being aware of what is, what's going on. So take a little time. And whatever level you recognize 
the anxiety, the stress, the pain, the, this deep sense of needing something, needing something. Just be more aware when you feel the need of something. There's nothing you need. If there's truly something you need, you have to need is to self-realize. But then every other thing, is, there's no need. But we feel need. When there's a strong sense of need, there's more chances of having difficulty or problems. Recognize that. And for some of you, it might fully make sense. Some of you might still think, no, it's not true. I still, I really need it. That's fine. That's your experience. It's fine. We're not arguing here. We are not discussing here. I'm fine with that. But there might be a lot of you. You this very moment, this very meditation, you realize this is not all I needed. Or maybe this is not all I really wanted. This is not really good for me. This is not what I really wanted. This is what I feel I needed. And I don't know why I feel I need it. Deep emptiness, deep fullness, a social pressure a collective pain, wind of collective pain throwing you in a specific direction that you don't have even have wanted to go in that direction. But you feel you need to go in that direction. Just whatever the story your story is, my, what I'm encouraging is just to recognize. And then you look back deep inside who, who is needing it? Who is needing to do this to feel powerful? But who is feeling powerless? So to recognize the one who is feeling weak is more important than the weakness trying to make some silly powerful action and feel false idea of feeling strong. It's not a point. So who is, who is trying to do this to make feel powerful? But this action might hurt you and others. Or who is trying to make this statement, strong statement, judgmental statement, painful statement, Trying to feel, I got it, to feel good. Why makes you feel good to make someone feel bad? It doesn't sound right. Who needed to feel good? able to say something bad and make something feel bad, someone feel bad. Who is that? That's more important to recognize. Who is trying to make this decision? unmature person who's trying to make decision, decision or middle age, going through a middle age crisis who's trying to, going crazy, making crazy decisions. Who never had things in life, finally have something in life, going, going crazy with this, what you have in your life. Who is that? That's not clear positive action. That's not clear. That's not even positive. 
that's going to have some consequences. But who is doing it? When you look like that, you recognize someone deep in, someone is confused. It's unclear, it's taking that negative action. Someone is feeling weak. And to, f to feel strong is taking some strong actions, but not coming from right place not coming from clear place, not coming from open place, not coming from warm place, not coming from clear place. That, that's, that's why it's going to have some consequences because it will limit, it will be painful, it will, it will create a lot of confusion because it's not coming from open place. A compassion, kindness is not coming from clear place. So there will be are consequences once it's taken those decisions, those actions. Can you see that? Can you feel that? So when you realize this deep place where it's this action is coming from, this doubt is coming from, this these emotions are coming from, the need is coming from, pain. Can you see that sense of pain identity? You can be open and connected to that. You can be be gentle and kind to it. You can feel compassion to it. You will you you can feel playful with it, joke about it, joke about it, joke to it. You can laugh to it. You can smile to it. You can dance with it. You can make show your middle finger to it. You can do anything from very compassion, kindness to very uh, fearless action, like cutting through the wisdom sword. There's no one way of overcoming it, because the one who is trying to overcome it, also there are many different layers of it. And overcoming is the common goal, how to overcome, overcome it's individual stage who is trying to overcome depend on that. So find your way. So whatever the way your way of See, recognizing it, seeing it, connecting with it, processing it, continue. As I gave many options, and uh, while we're listening to the Salavu Mantra, feel the Salavu Mantra is a blessing, power. I'm keeping holding all of you in my prayers, and let's hold all of us, each other, in our prayers to each other, so that you. Find some healing, some, find some clarity to take clear, positive action for collective well-being, enriching your own life, benefiting others.
Okay, so how is the meditation? 
I hope you see something, feel something new, see something clear, change some maybe action. Just just before I conclude, I just want to give some example. For example, like sometimes professionally speaking, there are people who hate their job. They always have so much problem, stress, unhappy, but they can never let it go and they keep it until it destroys their health, their well-being. And basically it kills them. I've seen many of them. Because they just they don't see any other options. Of course, there's other options. During pandemic, so many people found so many different way of communicating, so many different way of doing things, same, so many different way of doing better, doing what they did before pandemic. Some many people found so many new ways and different ways to do things, but they have no idea before. Of course, they all exist. But you don't want to find them through deep trouble. You want to find them with your own space, time, and energy, and clarity. So basically, you don't want to destroy your well-being and health doing things that you hate to do. Second example, being in a bad relationship. Dependency. Why you wanted to continue? You are so unhappy, so painful, too much story, stressful. You're not able to change it. Change it in two ways. One, not trying to improve it and clear the confusion, connect deeper with the heart, argue for, don't argue for no reasons, for nothing find more collective place to connect, deepen intimacy, respecting more each other, each other's need. That's a deeper way to go, evolving in a relationship in a deeper way, healthier way. Or break it, it's okay. Doesn't have to be very bad, negative. The turn doesn't have to be turned into animosity. You respect each other, care about each other, still take care of each other, but find your own different life. But one thing you don't want it to do, destroy collective well-being, destroy well-being of yourself, destroy the well-being of the other person that you are in relationship with. Some clear decisions you need to take place to go toward, deepen, grow every sense. Or maybe not different level of growth, Definitely deeper level of growth, you know, deeper level of connection. As in a relationship, when you are married for so many years, not every level of relation remains same. You're no longer same youthful, young, fresh, energetic, physically, getting older. But your heart is not getting older. Your heart is getting younger, being more playful, being more fun, connecting deeper, finding more deeper connection with each other. Absolutely. Or even in general in society, what, you, what direction that you're going, you don't have to go where everybody's going. If one person is be becoming crazy, two is becoming crazy, three is becoming crazy, you don't have to become crazy because of the majority is going crazy. There got to be some people not going direction to the craziness. 
remain being yourself. And not even not have to respond, you know, nowadays in social media, everybody judging each other. They're deep in pain. They're feeling negative. They're feeling dark. They're feeling, uh, they're not feeling good in themselves. Then they're attacking other people, judging other people. People don't know any clue about the other person. They have some idea that they don't know. They have one conversation with each other. I always find it amazed people like that finding time to do those kind of things. If you have a time, time can be better used. Meditate with the family, spend time with the family, with friends, do social work, be kind, bring more light in the place of darkness. So clear, positive action, it always challenge us every single moment of our life. And I hope that each this moment, you find enough trust to yourself, enough, enough light in yourself, enough choice with yourself to do, take the right choice, right decision not influenced by others or your pain. Thank you.